started because my father was a photographer, but he was automotive, so it was completely different. Um, and he got me my first camera, and I remember taking it out to a creek and taking photos of my best friend there. There was an abandoned house that had caught on fire, and one of the walls completely fell in. And there was this pristine porcelain bathtub right in the middle of this burned down house. And uh, there were flowers growing out of it, and I thought that was so beautiful. And. Uh, that kind of speaks to what style I do now because everything has this sort of ethereal, dreamy look to it, especially in my film photos. Um, and that's where that comes from, really. My dad just kind of gave it to me and he said, okay, run with it. He told me the basics, but I didn't know very much at all. Um, there was always something kind of missing and I didn't know what it was. So I took a break for about a year and a half and I didn't shoot anything and I started writing. And, um, you know, primarily I say that I'm an artist, not a photographer, and all my friends get on me for that because they say, no, you're, you're a photographer. But at the end of the day, what I am is just an artist and photography comes with that. So, you know, with my writing and with everything else, it, um, it got me into film. So eventually I found that and then I just took it and ran with it. So that's all I do now. And overall, I just want my work to be emotive. And um, even now, you know, I, I look at my work and I say, that's not enough. That's not what I want to be doing because it's, um, it's to face value. You know, a photograph can be beautiful, but that doesn't mean that you feel something when you look at it. And again, really, um, all I want to do is create that vibe so that when you look at something you you feel a certain emotion and just with writing that's power whenever you do something like that it's it's a form of power because you're swaying someone to feel nostalgic or sad or happy or whatever you're trying to do there and uh, I, I really enjoy playing with that it's a lot of fun I had mentioned before my dad was a photographer he was automotive but really he admired um, a lot of film photographers and he showed me the people that he admired that were portrait artists. You know, Sally Mann, who is my number one inspiration for everything that I do in photography and you see something a little bit different. And at that point in time I, again, didn't know much about photography at all, so one of the very first, first photographs that I came across was a tintype. And I had no idea that's what it was. And I just said, oh, how did they do that? That must be Photoshop. Or that must be some filter that they slapped on there. And, um, you know, I ended up looking it up and I figured out what it was and I truly admired it. But I never thought that it was something that I could do because I knew that it required so much effort. And I didn't know anything about film. Um, I had never even shot. 35 millimeter at that point in time. I think kind of overnight I realized that the wet plate process was what I wanted to learn um, and that goes back from you know the very beginning of my photography career when I saw that photo. The wet plate collodion process um, was invented late 1800s by Frederick Scott Archer but I specifically do tin type so you take a sheet of aluminum and you create an emulsion with collodion and silver nitrate. Um, and then with that, you put that into the camera while it's still wet. You take the photograph, you take it out. I have a dark box, so it has to be light tight. Um, and I develop the photograph in the box and then I fix it right in front of you. So essentially you're doing the process from start to finish. Um, 
in less than 15 minutes, the entire, the entire process right in front of your eyes. Um, like I was saying earlier, there's nowhere to hide with Tintype, you know, it captures everything. And I love that because whenever you photograph someone on Tintype, you almost capture their soul. And it's a physical form. So you can sit there and you can look at it and you can look at every single fine detail and it's beautiful. And I love the idea that you can do anything you want to it, you know. If you wanted to, you could throw it away, you could scratch it, you could ruin it, or you could frame it and put it on a wall. You have the power over it. The majority of the time, whenever you see a photo of a woman taken by a man, and the woman is nude, you see his vision of her. So he may focus on certain aspects of her that are more sexual than others. For me, it's the opposite, because I'm not trying to capture sex, I'm trying to capture beauty. And I'm also not trying to create beauty. I think that's a really big difference between me and other photographers because I'm not trying to, you know, create something that isn't already there. You know, with photography, it's something that I do so that I'm able to remember my life. It's not something that I do really to make money. I do make money off of it, but it's not a necessity for me and at the end of the day I want to have an experience with someone. Um, it doesn't matter if I like how it looks and I just want to capture it. I'm just there you know as a fly on the wall basically so I, I like to do more black and white um, maybe some large format. The more effort you put into that I feel like the the more satisfying it is whenever you get the shot and I love that. I love, I love the satisfaction of working extremely hard and then, you know, seeing it pay off, whether it be what you expected or not.